Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. We will be starting in less than five minutes time where Paul will be talking around enhance your teaching superpowers with breakout rooms. If anyone does have any questions, please do use the chat um, to ask your questions and Paul will answer them throughout the session. But until we start in around four minutes time now, um, be sure to, to get yourself comfortable, ready for a great session here at Teams Nation. Hello and welcome everyone to Teams Nation. I make it dead on the hour now. Um, so welcome along to, to this great event and this great session where Paul will be talking about enhance your teaching superpowers with breakout rooms. If you do have any questions, please do use the raise hand functionality throughout the session. Um, you are on hard mute, but I will be able to unmute you. Use the chat as well to post your questions and then there will be some time for questions at the end. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to hand over to you now, Paul. Um, so thank you all for that, assuming I am now going live and presenting to you all. Um, I would, I'm actually just watching uh, the chat over here on a computer to my left. And I'm also actually presenting here with this big screen here today. So I'm going to talk you through a little bit about what I'm doing today. Okay, so 
Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Um, yes, my name is David Kellerman. Some of you may have seen some of my past presentations. I did a big presentation in Vegas for the Inspire conference with Sacha as part of his keynote. And because you are the team's enthusiasts, I'm not going to repeat any of the stuff that I presented for that conference. So I'm really uh, excited today to be able to show off a little bit about what I'm doing uh, today, what I've been doing post COVID, and I'm going to present to you all here today um, about my new system and how I'm using Teams. So I'm talking a lot about collaborative learning and about the web, and I want to run through a few of these exciting things. Now, this is a Surface Hub 2S that I am running here. And this experience that you're having at the moment is the exact experience that my students are getting at the moment. Uh, I built this exactly one year ago today. My very first class during COVID wasn't PowerPoint karaoke. It was an experience here. And I really love this ability to be able to point and gesture at a big screen to be able to draw and be able to move to my slides in this much more sort of connected manner. So there are a couple of other interesting things today. We are actually having a Teams meeting right now. I use Teams to present to my students online over the web live. And I'm gonna do something magical here right now, which is I'm gonna turn the chat on over here. Now, this is a copy of the chat I hope that you're all posting in. I'm not sure whether this is um, strictly a presenter mode or if um, this is the chat that everyone's seeing. So maybe some people want to put some comments in here. Okay, great. There's a fantastic comment that's just uh, come through there already. Okay. So I'm actually live producing this today and it's something that I'm uh, a little bit excited to show you all about. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to go through that. Now, normally this is the last class that I taught. This was in 2019. I took this photo in about November. And what you're actually looking at here is 1,000 students. These are all of my students that I was teaching simultaneously. The top is a class of 600 and the bottom is a class of 500 there at the moment. Now, this is what the experience looked like for most people going into the pandemic, which was a learning management system, lots of PDF files and lots of lecture recordings from a lecture capture system. And I think today when students move online, when they're not able to go to their beautiful campus anymore, they start thinking, oh, I can get information from Wikipedia and I can watch videos on YouTube. And if all I'm getting is videos from my university and documents on the learning management system, then what am I paying for? You know, going to a campus is a real coming of age experience for a lot of young people. They're incredible facilities. And we lose a lot when we go online. And so basically, when I look at what the state of education is today, it's kind of like a fixer upper. We've got this old decrepit building. We're trying to upgrade it to the modern era. And the reality is, is it's not worth it. Just knock it down and start over. And this is exactly what I started doing around 2016 when I began using OneNote Class Notebook. In 2017, when I started using Teams. So I'm now already up to four solid years of using Teams in higher education. Time goes crazy. Well, my project with this is we look at teams what is it all about it's a collaborative platform it's designed for productivity and actually what i want to do is i want to create a learning community that is like a team it's not teacher and student it's more like i am a manager of a thousand employees we're working together i'm motivating them i'm inspiring them i'm giving them help and support where they need so that they can work together and do their best. This is a different approach to education. I call it collaborative education for the modern workplace. And one thing about the modern workplace is it is digital. 
and it is going hybrid as well. As people go back to the offices, some will be at home, some will be in the office, some people will be stuck in other countries because of COVID restrictions, but a lot of people don't want to go back full time anymore. They want to go back three days a week. So this is, you know, 2017, I put everything into Office 365, I created these massive teams, chatting together and so on. And this is some of the things that I've spoken about in the past, uh, which I don't want to go through anymore. Um, so I'm just going to flick past some of these things. Now, one of the really exciting things that we're able to do today is, and oh, I'm going to do another trick for you here. You're squinting at this screen going, I can't really read what Kellerman is putting up on that screen. This whole idea of standing in front of the screen's not that great. But what if I could just, you know, share my screen directly with you? You know, these are some of the things that I'm able to do uh, instead um, with my systems. So here we go now all of a sudden, sorry, uh, that's the wrong camera actually. Um, what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to share my screen directly here. And what I'm using here is I'm using NDI technology on this Surface Hub to send an NDI feed over to XSplit. And XSplit is creating, you can use OBS as well for this, is creating a virtual camera and then Teams is using this virtual camera. And so now as I write here over on this screen, we're getting a direct feed of what I'm doing. But if instead what I want to do now is I want to gesture and I want to talk about that, then I have the screen here in front of me. And I have a second camera view, which I'll show you a bit later. In fact, I've got a few other interesting camera views that I want to talk about a bit later in my presentation. Now, what I'm showing you here is in fact the learning management system, which is Moodle. This is the old place where we used to do university and it's been turned into a Teams app. And I think that this is the future of higher education. We take all of that old content, we think of it like a legacy that's in a container and we basically just throw it inside of Teams because what Office 365 is doing, what Teams is doing, is it's giving us all of these modern collaboration tools. Now, many of the things that we're really used to with the learning management system is laying out materials and other such things. And in fact, what I do today is I actually build a SharePoint page instead of all of these kind of assets. And so this is a SharePoint site that is at the back end of the team. And what is really fascinating is we're having a Teams meeting right now. I run my team meetings as channel meetings. They get recorded and now with stream version two, those files are on ODSP, okay, OneDrive SharePoint. The recording for that video actually becomes a SharePoint asset. We pin that video as a team. We link to it on the SharePoint page saying this is what happened this week, and that is the actual file. There's no upload or download or linking to source. Everything, in fact, lives there. And the presentation that I'm giving, let's say just down here, there's a PowerPoint presentation just like the one I'm giving you. I've uploaded it to the file, no. I build the file on SharePoint. I see a mistake in it, I just change it. And with the learning management system, we're used to this workflow of fix it, delete the one that's on the server, upload the new version. It's a really prehistoric model. This idea of all of the assets being in the cloud, being on SharePoint natively, allows a kind of integration that is really unprecedented. Now, some of you may be familiar with QuestionBot. It's a bot I presented in the talk back in 2019. And when we have these native assets, when we know where they're going to go, we have this incredible ability to automate and to integrate different systems. Now, another part of digital workflow is actually taking physical things and putting them into the digital environment. Now, in your classic example, a student comes into the class, they've got their homework here. Now, I can actually show you because those booklets are something that I physically print out and I give them to my students. And a teaching assistant might mark down the grade, put it on a spreadsheet, go back to their office later, type it into Excel, email that Excel file, 
for the main teaching assistant who's going to merge all of them using VLOOKUP, who's going to email that to the professor, who's then going to put that column into his master spreadsheet, who's then going to upload it to the learning management system that's then going to sync with the system of record. Now, this is the actual workflow for every single grade that is happening inside a tutorial class, and it's totally insane. And what are you looking at right here, of course, is just a power app. A couple of days of work, build, I mean, a couple of hours in some cases, build a beautiful power app that automatically filters down to the teaching assistant, the particular class they're in based on the time of day. They're in front of the student and they just go, yep, you've done your work, boom, one. And they tap one, and that mark goes straight up to Azure SQL, maybe goes straight to the team's grade book, and that's it. Digital workflow is done. And one of the other things that the team's folks announced just recently was this uh, increased number of different student information systems that Teams Gradebook is now syncing with. So that's it, your workflow is now just a button press away. And I think, again, that is just a really powerful concept. Now, there's more to it than that because when I have data real time running in the cloud, maybe my TA is in front of a student and at that very moment, they see, oh, orange, orange, orange. This student has handed their work in three out of the last four weeks late. That's a moment where they are empowered with information to say, hey, what's going on? Do you need some additional help? Do you need some additional support? Okay, so I'm just going back over here. Okay, and so, in fact, this kind of data flow really empowers us as humans to connect more with people. Now, one of the other incredible things in Teams Education Edition now is Classroom Insights. Now, this is there by default if you are on an education tenant. You go Add, Tab, Insights. Maybe you have to add the app first. And this tool, I have been working with the engineering team on this, giving feedback for two and a half years now. And this is really incredible because when you start taking a completely integrated system, what you're talking about is you've made a classroom, you're giving your students assignments that are SharePoint documents using Teams assignments, you're getting together on Teams meetings that are channel meetings, you're talking to each other in the different channels, and just like what I presented with two years ago about tailored learning, about building data schemas so that we can understand our students better, we now have all of this information by default. One click, it's a tab, and there is all of the information there. Now, one of the incredible numbers here out of Insights is how many posts have actually happened in your classroom team. In 2016, when I took over my engineering class for 400 students, I went to the learning management system, I went to the forum tab, and I manually counted how many posts there were. There were about 70 or 80, and every one of them had one single reply from a teaching assistant or the professor who answered the question, and that was it. That's not a conversation, that is an answer. So we're talking about a grand total of 140 posts in an entire semester. 140 posts where 50% of them are by the professor. In the last semester of 2020 in COVID, Insights told me that my classroom had 14,000 posts from the students in the class. 14,000. That's not 10 times, people. That is 100 times the number of posts per student for the same size class. That is a mind blowing statistic. And again, with tools like QuestionBot, you might be going thousands of posts, how can I ensure I never miss a question? I'm not gonna talk about QuestionBot again, but I'm gonna tell you one new thing that happened since that last presentation that many people will have seen, which is that QuestionBot is an open source project now that's about a quarter of a million dollars worth of code that I've put up on GitHub for free. You can fork that code. Universities around the world, like Imperial College London, have taken that code, 
and they've customized it for their own tenant. I think that this is a really cool way that we can share as a global community in higher education and something that's actually a more open development platform than the learning management system. Now, I have been doing live broadcast classes and I'll show you here. This is a picture, this is a screen grab of 2019. Here's me standing in the front. I've got my Surface Pen in hand, which I'm using to ink up onto the screen, which is on the big projector. I've got a student who is doing live production for me. and We were sending it out on a, a stream live event or a Teams live event back then. I wasn't using channel meetings. And this was designed to be a really great experience for the students, but also a good experience for the students who were online, of which just a very small proportion of them would have been uh, joining back then. OK, so. Oh, sorry, I just want to cancel that. So I don't know what how that happened. Uh, I just want to hit escape there. Oh, discard. Sorry, I just accidentally uh, put this down. So one of the interesting things about the classroom is that thing there that I'm talking about in my lecture, this thing here, this is called a universal tensile testing machine. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. We actually have this in the laboratory. It's sitting there. It's a very dangerous piece of equipment. We obviously can't fit 500 students into the laboratory. And it's not practical to get that many students into that tiny room either, unfortunately. So what can we do with that? Well, I had this idea. What if we point an Azure Connect augmented reality camera? Now, this is not to digitize that object, but it is to digitize it in real time in 3D. We put a second camera at the front of the room so that we understand the geometry of the room and where I'm standing. And then what we're able to do is you can see here, I'm at the front of the room. I'm inking out a problem. I'm solving when is the specimen going to break that is inside the universal testing machine. Let's cross over to the laboratory. Now that machine is not on the front of the lecture room. It's being put there using augmented reality and it's being beamed in real time from the lab to the front of the room. Now this is a really fascinating example because if you think about it, you might go, yeah, but the students in the front row of the classroom can't see it. They have to look up onto the screen to see this AR experience. Now that we are online, now that we are teaching students remotely, I can put that augmented reality object. I'm not going to do it right now. It would have been a great demo. I should have set it up here. But we put that AR object in front right now in real time we can talk about it, it's running live, and every single student is seeing that because we are digital. We're getting better potential experiences, and with things like insights, we're getting better telemetry as well. So everything that I do now is live, okay? It is um, collaborative, and it is creative. There's no material that we start with. The course is like a blank book, with the table of contents, and we're going to write it together as a team. We're going to use tools like SharePoint. We're going to use these modern platforms to work together. So let's talk about COVID-19, right? What happened? Well, I already told you something really cool, which is that's where I was before the pandemic even started. So they were saying lockdown, teaching remotely, and I was thinking, great, this is going to be fun. I built this studio set up in May before my very first class. I wasn't teaching actually in March when the first lockdowns happened. And I had a lot of time to think about what would be better experiences. Now, one of the things we're seeing right now here is that I've got this chat docked. Uh, I don't know if this is the same chat or not where, where everyone's able to speak or if this is the production chat. But my students are having a conversation as I lecture. And so maybe I'm doing some sort of diagram and I'm solving a problem and one of my students goes, oh, I don't understand why did he differentiate it with respect to X? And another student goes, oh, no problem. You know, I can solve, uh, all, all you need to do is, um, you know, 
have a look at the curvature of it. And then the other person replies back and they say, thanks. And this is all going on right here. And it's equivalent to two students whispering to each other at the back of a lecture theater and helping each other out, except that everybody is getting the benefit. But why am I putting it here on screen? I'm doing it so that it's actually captured in the recording so that my asynchronous students can watch this scrolling by throughout the lecture in time. So I might have Max ask me a question, hey, where does the maximum deflection occur? And I go, great question, let's go solve that now. And you actually are getting this contextualized when you're an asynchronous student. So everything changed, we know that, right? And all of a sudden, this beautiful place, this is UNSW campus where I normally get to walk and go to my office in the morning. So all of a sudden, it's totally useless. And there were these five really big things that I was still using the, cam uh, the campus for. So lecture theatres is one of them, and that's the first thing that I'm going to talk about right now. So I'm going to ask everybody, if you will, to join me for a very brief class in Engineering Mechanics 1. So you're now in the waiting lobby. You're waiting for a class to start. And again, I'm self-producing here today as I talk. And uh, it's three minutes past nine in the morning and you're waiting for your class to start. And I say, hello everyone, welcome to Eng2400. It's great to see you all today. How are you feeling? The chat goes crazy. People go, oh, I'm really stressed out. I've got a thermo assignment. And I go, okay, that's really interesting because I've got this assignment due on Friday as well. I wonder if we could work something out to help distribute your workload. So straight off the bat, we're communicating. We're in this really personable manner here. So we might talk about a few different things today. Let's determine the stress. We're going to establish deflection functions. We're going to calculate the maximum deflection of a beam. And I might use an example here uh, like the Harbour Bridge. Okay, It's an interesting curve called a catenary. And I could overlay a 3D version. There's a morph effect there in PowerPoint. And what we're really interested in is this idea that every one of the hangers that's coming down from the bridge is creating a point load. And so we're going to have to use these things called step functions. Now, as we're doing the step functions, maybe I'm getting heavy into some maths over here and you're going, oh, that's a bit hard to see. And so, of course, I just tap a button and now you're getting this really nice screen feed of what I'm doing. So I get to a point here where I go, well, let's actually calculate one of these as a worked example. You can say, I'll put a hyperlink here to the class notebook. Now, the class notebook in OneNote is actually automatically generated by a classroom team. It is linked to the, the same class. It's automatically got a tab. And every week where I make a channel, and I'm going to open this up here, you'll see that every week where I create a channel has actually got a section inside the notebook that's created. And all of my students are down here, all 500 of them. So every ink stroke that I write on this board is already going into an organized, easy to find place for those students. And so what I might do is I'll start solving a particular problem. Okay, and so I'm over here and I'm, I'm going to start doing this and all of a sudden you're kind of looking at my back. And so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over here to a second camera. And so now because I've got this second camera, I'm actually able to talk to everybody here while I do it. So I'm going to draw a bean there. You see I just use ink to shape. I'm going to give it a little bit of color here, just like my other beams. I'm going to put a force arrow, whoops, sorry, red. I'm going to put a force arrow here and I'm going to have these reaction points here. And at this point, one of my students says something like, oh, you know, how would you calculate the maximum deflection? And so I go, yep, great question. This was Max we spoke about earlier. All we have to do is differentiate the slope, find out where it's zero using the quadratic equation. And look, sure enough, what we discover, something really fascinating, is that even though the force is here, the maximum deflection is actually occurring here where the slope is zero. And what's really great about this idea is we're able to layer physical and digital things on top of one another as we bend that curve and we can actually really contextualize what we're doing. 
this kind of idea of me being able to manipulate and talk about things and layer digital, physical, digital, one after the other is incredibly powerful and it's much more engaging than that typical floating head karaoke kind of experience. Now, this is really cool, but you know, there's something else really exciting, which is we have an experiment of this. And right here, what you're looking at, so I'll share my screen here quickly, is this is our laboratory digitized into three dimensional space. This is a bubble, this is our undergraduate teaching lab. And this is an experiment. This is not a 3D render, okay? This is actually a digitization of the real experiment for rolling disk for calculating momentum. And if you look really closely, you'll see there's a ruler there. And we've animated this using real physics. So the students can go into the lab in this 3D space and they can actually take their own experimental measurements from the rig. This is really cool because they're in our physical lab in a 3D space. Now you might be going, oh, okay, yeah, you know, great, but more software, I thought you were all about integration. That was SharePoint Spaces. That is sitting there on the SharePoint site, a native AR immersive mixed reality environment pinned as a tab in Teams. We've got a digital lab now. Azure Connect, SharePoint Spaces, and a SharePoint tab in Teams. How cool is that? So we finish our example, we jump back over here, and we go, here's a summary of all of the equations we did. Next week, you can join me for distortion energy. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you next week. And look, there's a picture of the outside of the lecture theater and the students have a sense of connection to the campus. So that's my classroom, right? Now, the next thing I just wanna talk about is tutorials. So tutorials are a really difficult thing to run, but what's particularly tricky is how do you run a hybrid tutorial? Well, what we're doing now is we're turning our tutorial rooms into Teams meeting rooms. So you think about that conference room now. If you look really carefully here what's going on, my, I've got two teaching assistants on my teaching team. The first one of them here, I just grab my pen here, has got a Surface Pro tablet. They're inking the solutions which are being put up onto the big screen. You can see there, that's the solution being inked but the screen is being shared in the Teams meeting. Now, while he is doing this, I've got Lucy here, and Lucy is joining digitally instead of physically, and Lucy is helping the students who are online. When Brad finishes with the physical <coughs> example, Lucy is gonna do the second example remotely on the web, <coughs> sharing her screen with digital ink. It's on the big screen at the front of the physical classroom. And now Brad, who's standing here, is able to walk around the room and help the physical students. And they go back and forth, who's gonna do an example and who's gonna help people in digital space and in meet space. So pretty interesting, right, when you think about it, because what we're doing is we're giving students the flexibility to decide where they're gonna to go to the classroom or gonna join digitally, and especially when one week we're worried about COVID and the next week, you know, cases are going down. The students are empowered again to decide. They don't have to enroll in one mode or the other. We're mixing these people together. I just showed you the laboratories already with the demo there. Again, that's SharePoint Spaces. If you don't see SharePoint Spaces, go to the SharePoint site behind the team, go into all SharePoint settings and enable uh, uh, SharePoint spaces and go in and have a play. This is a really easy thing. You'll be amazed what you can do with SharePoint spaces. Now, another thing I love doing is I love getting all of my students together for a study day. So you can see, actually, you know, there's one more thing I just want to talk about with the lab here, sorry, which is that I've got one more camera angle that I haven't shown you here. So, hey, I'm over here right now. And what you can see is my whole setup. So. I've got my production computer, I've got my production camera, I've got my big screen over here, and here I've got the screen where I'm reading the chat and responding to students in real time. But 
I've got a bit of a trick up my sleeve here, which is that this is not yet another camera. This is actually my phone, okay? So I'm gonna switch back to this one. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just holding my phone and my phone is running NDI, which is an app, switch it on, on my network and I just add the source and all of a sudden I can do it. Now Teams is sending out NDI feeds as well. We can get a feed of the shared screen, a feed of the participants, a screen of together mode. One of the things that I'll show you that I'm actually doing also here is that I've got a big, see there's my camera that I'm looking at and as I look past the camera, I'm watching all of you guys, if anyone would turn their camera on, you'd see that I'm actually looking at everybody's faces as I stand here and I look at the camera. You see that view, right? Look, I'm looking and there we go. There's our producer right there. I'm actually looking at everybody in the eye. G'day, there you go. Thank you very much for doing such a good job. But really what I wanna do with this is instead of talking about the laboratory for a moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna talk about this which is an experimental rig. This thing is actually called a ratchet lever. And we're going to do an experiment this week where we're gonna calculate the force that's generated. And again, I won't go into details, but you can see here my ability to walk around, about, talk about these different things and use it. Now, how much new hardware did I need to do this? Zero, because I'm just using my phone to do it. And I'm adding these different scenes. It's so freeing all of these different things that we can do to make a Teams meeting better. I'm going to show you one other trick just for a laugh, which is that I'm on my beautiful Surface Hub here and I'm going to rotate it into vertical mode because I want to do uh, some really long maths equation, for example. And I'm going to I need to, of course, uh, rotate that screen sideways. And then what I'm going to do with it is, let's see, what am I doing? Oh, that's right. I'm going to create a new vertical scene here, you see? So I've done all of this maths. It goes forever. It's really long and vertical. I want a lot of space for some reason to show you something really long and tall. Maybe we're doing uh, a calculation to do with this long stool and I need all of this vertical space. You can see here that I've created a whole new scene that I'm able to switch in and talk about all of these different elements. There's so much exciting things that we can do with these kinds of digital experiences. So I'm going to jump out of that. I'm going to uh, rotate my screen back to normal and I'll go back to main camera here. So just about to wrap up here, study day is something really cool. They work as channel meetings. I do this thing now with study day. You can see it here on the screen where I create a flip grid challenge for all of my students to make a video tutorial and they get a bonus mark. 1,300 views of videos made and watched in a day that students teaching students, building communities and again, flip grid, integrated with Teams natively, no new login, just use the Microsoft login that they're already using. Exams is the last thing that I'm going to talk about. I think it's 6.39, so I'm just going to wrap up now. Study halls. What did we do? We pointed cameras at students and we creepily watched them. It's called proctoring. Nobody liked it. My university said no to proctoring straight away. And I thought, how could I go the complete opposite direction? This is a collaborative subject, right? Engineering is a collaborative profession. Now, I'd already created a digital workflow. What you're actually looking at here is exams where the multi-choice is just you putting your student number so that we could auto read them from scans. These were physical exam booklets brought in. And you can see here that we've scanned the booklet. We've got the QR code. We know what page it is automatically. Well, here's what I did. I put my exam, I made every question a forms question. I embedded it as a web part in a SharePoint page. And then I pinned the SharePoint page as a Teams tab. And I said to my students, this is an open collaborative exam. You could talk to each other during the exam. You could help each other out, but it's automatically forged, forked using 
branching inside a form so everyone exam, everyone's exam has different numbers. This is a collaborative exam. It's built on trust. Again, a theme, not only of Microsoft, but of this conference. Now there's this booklet. I showed you before, I'm holding it here. I posted them all around the world. Every student's booklet was unique. It had their only unique QR code, and I had a record of their handwriting because of their homework. They use Office Lens, now built into Teams assignments. Submit work Office Lens launches on your phone via Teams, no extra app. Scan their work, and now what you're looking at is a real scan here that's been brought up. It's fantastic quality that you can see, and I've got nine different questions there from my exam. I've got the unique QR code for that student. I've got handwriting for integrity. And I can even automate the marking. So I feed a rubric into Azure Machine Learning. And how about this for crazy? Azure Machine Learning is using object identification. It's finding the different parts of the object and it's saying it believes it's correct. Why well, don't rely on the machine learning? It can even give feedback when students are wrong. But what I actually do is I use Graph API to automatically pre-fill the rubric in Teams assignments and even to pre-fill the feedback. Then a human comes along and they're checking that the AI didn't make mistakes, but they're using all of that extra time to give feedback that matters instead of tick, cross, yes, right, no. More time to focus humans being humans, doing the things that they like doing doing the things that are valuable to students. Here's the histogram from the exam in 2019 in the big exam hall proctored. Here's the histogram from an open collaborative exam run on Teams, SharePoint and Forms. No difference in the distribution, integrity, not a problem. I trust my students, I treat them like professionals, they rise to the challenge. So, I'm not going to go through this today. It's this is this is a project just launched. It's called Career Coach. I worked with the team for a couple of years, giving them feedback on this as well. They did an amazing job. Go check out Career Coach as well. It connects their LinkedIn and their skills. It brings in things from LinkedIn Learning to bridge the gap. So, can we leave behind learning management system? Should we knock it all down and start again? Well, in COVID, in 2020, for the first time ever, not 99% student satisfaction, I got a perfect 100%. Every student loved it. Every student said this works for me. That's our most valuable asset, students. AI, data that lets us be better humans, connect to humans, not disconnect or replace them. Bots that connect people, not replace people. This is my vision for the digital campus hybrid learning. Thank you everyone for listening.